When I was a kid, I absolutely loved King Kong. The animation, the set pieces, the story, and the adventure all enthralled me, and I was eager to watch it whenever it came on TV. I would draw my own King Kong comics, reenact the scenes with my action figures, and generally just obsess over it any chance I got. That's why when I revisited it recently, I was really shocked to find out that it didn't hold up nearly as well as I had remembered. I know this is going to be a controversial review, but here are my thoughts on the 1933 classic, King Kong. <laughs> Now, King Kong was a technical achievement when it was released. People lost their shit over it. They were talking about it similar to how people talked about Jurassic Park or Avatar when those movies were released. This was thanks to the hard work of animators Willis O'Brien and Buzz Gibson, who masterfully sculpted complex and expressive performances from the film's various puppets, bringing the creatures of Skull Island to life. Several other cutting-edge effects were implemented in service of the film's story, and as a result, King Kong has a timeless fantastical charm to it that even to this day separates it from other classics and makes it a visual delight. Honestly, nearly every element of the film's presentation is impressive. The set design, cinematography, lighting, sound design, pacing, themes, and directing all come together surprisingly well to form a cohesive whole. Nothing feels disjointed, and you can tell that every element is purposeful and exists to serve the story's themes and enhance the experience. When considering this, I'm not surprised at its godlike status amongst film fans. It's an exciting, tightly told story that doesn't waste your time and captures a unique atmosphere. That's why it pains me to say that I didn't like this movie nearly as much as I used to when I rewatched it. I don't think it's bad necessarily, but there are definitely elements that drag it down. Now when I watch a movie, one thing I like to keep in mind is what a movie is trying to be. I'm not going to judge Spider-Man 2 and expect it to be a Lars von Trier art house movie. I like to look at a film and judge it as a standalone piece of art. Not every movie needs to have a ton of substance to be great. Something mindless and stylistic such as Pulp Fiction is great for different reasons than something deliberate and thematically resonant like The Shawshank Redemption. However, what a film sets out to accomplish needs to be achieved through its various components. If a fun movie has a poorly developed theme, that's something the movie still tried to achieve and failed at. Pulp Fiction never pretends to have a theme, for instance, and that's why it's okay to not attempt and engage with the film thematically. After all, I'm not going to knock an expressionist painting for not being realistic. King Kong, on the other hand, does have a theme, which is so tightly woven into its characters and story that its failure ultimately drags down the rest of the movie. It wouldn't be fair for me to just ignore a deliberate artistic choice the film insisted on making when I don't give other films that same kind of pass. With that being said, King Kong's theme, its message, the core of the story itself, is bad. The film frames itself as a retelling of Beauty and the Beast, and as pointed out by Lindsay Ellis, it invents an Arabian proverb to encapsulate its core. The proverb is as follows, And lo, the beast looked upon the face of beauty, and it stayed its hand from killing, and from that day it was as one dead. King Kong is the story of a beast who, because he becomes enamored with beauty, betrays his primal instincts and dies tragically because of it. The entire tragic edge of the story hinges on this concept. In the eyes of the movie, beauty is represented by and is synonymous with Andera or women. The movie spends a lot of time talking about women and sets up the tragic thematic punchline through the lens of Anne's character. The lead, Jack Driscoll, finds the mere presence of Anne and women in general a problem. He even has a line directly saying this. And even though he ultimately ends up falling for her in a very poorly developed romance that Peter Jackson's remake even pokes fun at, Jack's feelings towards women are kind of validated in the eyes of the movie. Anne's presence sets into motion the problems that Denim's crew faces on the island when she's captured, and over a dozen men are killed because of this. In a way, the film seems to be saying that beauty is a double-edged sword that not only killed the beast Kong, but also Denim's entire film crew who, in their own way, stayed their hand and abandoned their primal instincts by pursuing Anne despite their better judgment. This would be a downright brilliant way that the film explores and develops its themes if what it was saying wasn't so fucking trash. Now I would be willing to look over some of these elements, but so much of the movie insists on focusing on them. Every element works together to support the shitty theme, and if you even try to engage with the movie on the deeper level it's asking you to, you just can't ignore it. It's really a shame, because while the effects, storytelling, cinematography, directing, and technical elements are surprisingly not dated, the story itself is. And in a movie like this, that puts so much emphasis on its story, that really wants you to feel the tragedy, it just falls flat due to its dated ideas. Overall, King Kong is not a bad movie but it's definitely not the classic I once thought it to be. The craft is so impressive, but the story is so bad. 
If the movie was only trying to be an adventurous, atmospherically rich experience, I think I would rate the movie higher. But as it stands, I just don't think it succeeds in achieving the emotional and thematic impact it was going for. So with that, I'm going to give King Kong a 5 out of 10. A technically impressive film with a story that just ends up misfiring. Anyways, what do you think of King Kong? Do you agree with me, or do you think I'm completely missing the point? I would love to hear your thoughts and analysis down in the comments. And thanks for watching. If you want more from me, please consider subscribing and following my blog. The link is in the description.